Okay, you guys, Dr. Mindy here, and the New England Journal of Medicine has reviewed the science on intermittent fasting and has put it in one article and has broken down what conditions intermittent fasting is good for, what has happening when you intermittent fast, the three different ways you can be intermittent fasting, um, and what, how you go about intermittent fasting, because there's a lot, it's not just as simple as just taking food away. So I'm gonna dive into the article, and I'm gonna show you what the science says so that you can benefit from it, because fasting is one of the greatest ways to heal your body. Okay, I'm really excited to bring to you guys a new article that came out just last week in the New England Journal of Medicine. And it was all about intermittent fasting. And um, it was really exciting because we are now starting, the medical world is now starting to understand fasting. They're starting to understand the importance of fasting in the healing process. And what the article did is it reviewed all the studies or many of the studies that have been done on intermittent fasting. And it highlighted what were the, the most significant findings. And so what I wanted to do for you today is I wanted to go through those highlights. I want to walk through, there were uh, eight things, eight different things that they went through. So stick with me as I go through this video because I really want you to understand how massively helpful intermittent fasting is to your body. And that you're gonna start, now that it's been in the New England Journal of Medicine, you're gonna start seeing your medical doctor having greater conversations with them about fasting. So if your doctor doesn't understand or doesn't know about this study, send them to this video. I'm gonna highlight all of the, the key points of this uh, review, and then um, they will have the link so they can go and look at it in the New England Journal of Medicine on its own. So. Um, okay, let me start off with the first thing. Uh, what is so exciting for those of us in the functional medicine world about the new, the, seeing an article like this in the New England Journal of Medicine is that the medical world really loves science and it, with good reason. And so we wanna be able to see things that we can replicate over and over and over again. And we wanna see that there's, it was done in a very controlled environment. So when an article gets published in the New England Journal of Medicine, it's really powerful because they're not gonna just pu publish any old article. They're gonna publish an article that has, that it has a lot of validity to it. So the prestige of the New England Journal of Medicine was really powerful um, for the concept of intermittent fasting, okay? Second part of this, of this review that I want you to understand is that they really talked about metabolic switching. So we've called it here metabolic, metabolically flexible, but metabolic switching is basically how we were designed, how the human body was designed. We were designed to go into times where we didn't get any food, and then we were time, designed to go into times where we had a lot of food. We call it feast famine cycles. We didn't, if you go back to the primitive days, we didn't have access to food all, all the time. So the body, our body is programmed to thrive when we don't have food and it has tools to thrive when we do have food. So metabolically, metabolically, metabolic switching is a really healthy place for you to be in. And with intermittent fasting, it is the first step to getting you metabolically uh, flexible or to, to master this metabolic switching. And I have a bunch of videos that I did on metabolic flexibility, so go and watch those. We'll link them in the notes here. Um, what is interesting about what the review said, and I wanna get the, all of the, the numbers right for you. They basically said that met, to them, metabolic switching is 18 to 14 hours of a fasted state. That in the research that they reviewed, that anywhere from 18 to 14 hours in a fasted state, your body starts to break down triglycerides and it turns those triglycerides into fatty acids and to, into glycerol. Once those fatty acids start to rise in the body, the fatty acids go to the liver and it signals to the liver to make ketones. So my third interesting fact from this article is that ketones, as many of you know, are the preferred fuel source for the brain. 
They're like actually the major fuel source for the brain. And what we're finding is that once these ketones go into the brain, they start to increase BDNF and BDNF is like fertilizer for your, for your brain. They can regenerate neurons in the brain that, have, that are degenerating from things like dementia and Alzheimer's. Um, we also know that they can start to stimulate uh, synaptic, this is what the article said, synaptic plasticity, where the dendrites at the end of the neurons are much more um, flexible and can deliver information uh, from neuron to neuron in your brain, which helps with mental clarity. Um, there are some interesting points that I'll make about uh, articles that they reviewed in this in this uh, in the article, the New England Journal of Medicine article that talked about memory and how powerful intermittent fasting is on memory. Well, that's because of ketones. Okay, so fourth thing about this article that was really Im impactful, and I really don't talk about this enough here on this channel, is that there are three different ways to do intermittent fasting. So they looked at the um, alternate day fasting, which is you eat whatever you want one day, and then the next day you fast all day. They also looked at studies done on what they call 5-2 fasting, which is five days of, of eating whatever you want and two days of fasting. So that's a whole style of intermittent fasting. And then the third type of intermittent fasting is restricted, uh, time-restricted fasting. That's kind of like what we recommend here. Um, when I say 13 to 15 hours, to me is intermittent fasting. What they looked at um, in their time-restricted fasting was more of like an 18-hour window of fasting and six hours of feasting. So there's three different ways that you can go about doing intermittent fasting. Okay, the, uh, the fifth thing that was intriguing about this article is that they talked about what the benefits are when you go into this metabolically switched state. And the interesting part is they asked themselves is, okay, well, when somebody's in this, can go into this metabolic switching and they start to drop weight, is it the weight loss that's affecting the, all the health benefits or is it because the body's using a different fuel source for energy? Is it the metabolic switching that is resulting in the amazing health benefits? And what they found out is that it's actually the metabolic switching that is really important and that the health benefits are coming because as you do more intermittent fasting, what you're doing is you're encouraging your body to lean into those mitochondria, to have the mitochondria start to create more energy. It's the burning of the fat. All of the that is magical for healing. And they went into what, exactly what metabolic switching is healing. It's repairing DNA. It's repairing proteins, it's raising antioxidants in your body, it's bringing inflammation down, it's repairing mitochondria, and it's stimulating autophagy. All of that from intermittent fasting, okay? The sixth thing that they talked about is that how powerful it is for the human body to be pushed to the edge of stress. Now, I just had a really interesting interview with Dr. Joseph Anton, who is the CEO of Prolon and is working with Dr. Walter Longo on uh, the fast mimicking diet. And he talked a lot about, and, I, and you'll hear this from so many experts, how important it is that we stress our body, that there should be a gentle stressor, not an extreme stressor, but a gentle one. In that gentle stressing, where you're going 13 to 15 hours without food, what's happening is that you are forcing your, your, your body to clean house. So the analogy, this is Dr. Anton's analogy, not mine, and, and, and this will come out on Resetter TV next week, is that he said if you have a company and the company is spending a lot of money and you need the company to cut back on how much on on their their they're not bringing in as much money so they have to cut back on their spending and all of a sudden you take all their spending away they're going to have to look at the different departments within the company and decide who's going to get cut the most is it the marketing department is the product development product department what part of the company are they going to have to back off back off on 
Same thing is happening in your body is that when you don't bring food in and you stress it, is that your body goes, okay, no food's coming in, we need to decide where we're gonna clean house. So the intelligence of your body makes that decision on what cells need to be repaired, what, pro what antioxidants need to, to be regulated, what uh, neurons need to be uh, repaired in the brain. So it, you're leaning into this intelligence, but you only get that intelligence by getting into this stress-adapted state. So, and I love that the article pointed that out. Okay, seventh thing that the article talked about is that there's really three major reasons, three conditions that you would want to live a intermittent fasting lifestyle. So you would wanna keep intermittent fasting going forever in your life for three different reasons. One is that it is, there's proven to increase lifespan. So the article, the study that was done on this is 80% that they saw, and this was a rat study. So rats increased their lifespan up to 80% when they maintained a regimen of it, alternate day fasting is what they did, of intermittent fasting every other day. So you can increase your lifespan. Obesity, they found that absolutely on making people more insulin sensitive, that fasting and intermittent fasting lifestyle absolutely helped with that. Hypertension, the, the, it showed that it helped with hypertension and inflammation and some of the things that come from being carrying extra weight on your body. And then the last part of this is that they really found that it is helping with memory, especially executive function, which is the prefrontal cortex. Um, this was after 12 months of doing intermittent fasting. They found that it helped with verbal memory, the executive function. It helped with um, working memory. Uh, so again, I'll link the article in there so you can see it. Okay, and the last couple of things I wanna tell you is that now that we've reviewed all the science, now that hopefully the medical profession is going to adopt many of these principles, encourage you all to start intermittent fasting, what clinical applications is this really, uh, do we know from re research that this is going to help? And they came up with eight different clinical scenarios that intermittent fasting would help with. The first is obesity and diabetes. The second is cardiovascular disease. The third is cancer. The fourth is neurodegenerative disorders like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. The fifth, which was interesting, is asthma. The sixth is MS. Seventh is arthritis. And the eighth is when, you want, when you're repairing from surgery, they put surgical and ischemic tissue repair. So eight different ways that science is showing us intermittent fasting rocks. Okay, Not the ninth thing I wanna point out and which was really cool is they gave you an example of how to intermittent fast. So this is based off of, of research that they said there's two different ways you can go about it. One is you can start with time-restricted feeding, which go back and watch my video on um, how do you start a fast, how do you begin in, into fasting. And that's basically what they recommend is a gradual increase where from month one in, uh, over a four-month period that you go from a 10-hour fasting window or feeding window um, to a six-hour feeding window. So over four months, you gradually work yourself to a six-hour feeding window. And then the other fast type of fast they have is calorie restriction, where you start with one day a week, you're doing 1,000 calories a day up until after four months, you're now at 500 calories a day for two days out of the week. So really cool chart, and I'll, and I'll we'll put, um, we'll, again, we'll link it in the study. So, but that, you know, to me, like the research, uh, the write-up in the New England General, Journal of Medicine, like we don't have to look at this as, as woo-woo science anymore. It's not. This is, we're seeing study after study after study of how intermittent fasting heals. So incredible thing as we go into this new year, please make sure that you're living a life that's packed with a lot of intermittent fasting because your body will thrive. And as many of my resetters are experiencing, um, you, can, you can heal, you can get off medication, you can heal yourself of crazy diagnoses, um, and you can finally love the body you live in and feel incredible. So if this is helpful, please put helpful in the comments, share it out. Uh, this information is gold, and I just want people to start to step into this lifestyle. So as always, I hope that helps.
Hey, a lot of you guys have been asking about our live event. It's called The Reset Experience. It's on January 11th, and I am going to bring everything that I talk about on this channel. Fasting, microbiome repair, mindset, detoxing, and we're bringing it to you in a live event with experts from all over the world that are gonna come and teach you the tools to build a fasting lifestyle. So if you wanna join us, whether you can join us live stream, we're having it professionally uh, live streamed, or you can join us in the actual venue, which is really cool, and we get to meet, we get to meet each other. I'd love to get to know you. Just put Reset Experience in the comments, and we'll make sure you get a link. Excited to share this with you.